Yo, 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 what up, my crouton homies? It's your boy Toasty with another vid for the bronies. What? what? Give myself PTSD flashbacks to this thing. Um, the... Uh... The, uh... Let's, uh... We gotta cut a hole in the bottom and fuck it. Alright, what's up? The ladder. This is test result. You have a case. <laughs> Why is it always their first game? Ugh. Oh. Games make me so upset. Let, let's just start the video now. Hell yeah! RPG Maker in 3D. With this, even if you make a stinky poo of a game, it can at least be visually unique. Hallelujah. I'll never have to suffer through those terrible ripped asset slash RTP nightmares ever again. Now, generally, you're better off doing 3D stuff in another engine like Unity or Unreal, but with this plugin you can create a really unique visual effect, and honestly it's still easier than trying to learn how to code. At least for me. I'm an idiot. Anyways, I'll go ahead and disappoint you right off the bat. This plugin isn't free. Yes, it's a plugin. No, it's not free. It's 20 US dollars on itch.io, or you can subscribe to the creator's Patreon and get that version instead. There are actually three versions of this plugin, the main MV3D plugin with Babylon.js, and then the MV3D Premium and Patreon plugins. The Premium and Patreon versions add additional content to the base MV3D Babylon.js plugin, such as Dynamic Shadows. They are exactly the same, however, and it doesn't matter which one you use so long as you have the Babylon.js plugin and one of the other two. Ahoy there! Toasty from the future is here to interject with better words this time! The base MV3D plugin with Babylon.js can be downloaded for free from the itch.io page, and using this free version you can experiment with the plugin before you dive into larger things. With only the base plugin I believe you can't do 3D models, but most core features are available. However, for a full-scale project I would highly recommend purchasing the premium or Patreon versions as well. That's all. Back to the video. Anyways, let's get rolling. Purchase the plugin from either itch.io or Patreon, and place them into your game's JS folder under plugins. Now, open up RPG Maker MV. Open the plugins list and add both of your plugins onto it. Make sure that both plugins are at the very bottom of your plugin list, and that your Patreon or Premium plugin is always placed below the Babylon.js plugin. Just ignore the parameters for now. Next, go to the itch.io download page and download the demo project file. This master project will be your new best friend, as it has examples of almost every single thing you could need. But, for now, ignore everything and open up the game's project file. Go into the images folder and find the folder called MV3D. Next, literally just copy and paste this folder into your game's images folder. You don't need to change anything inside of it, you just need the folder. Once you've done that, go back to your game's main folder and create a new folder called Models, with a capital M. This will allow you to place 3D models you create into your game. However, do note that all models need a .mtl and .obj variation, otherwise they won't work in-game. Once all of this is done, just restart RPG Maker MV, start a new playtest, and boom, things should be in 3D. Now, obviously this looks pretty wonky right now, but imagine the possibilities. However, before you get all carried away, there is still something we need to set up. Try placing, I don't know, this cactus onto your map right now and then playtesting it. Does that cactus look very happy to you? No, he looks like he's had a very bad day. But why was he run over by a steamroller? Well, let's start with this. If you hover your mouse over the tile set on the map editor, you'll see that it says the name of what said tile is, such as cactus. But if you hover over the tile set in the demo folder, it says what tile set you're hovering over and two numbers. What we need to do is get our tile set to display this instead, so let's go do that now. Open up the demo project's main folder, go to images, and then tile sets. You'll notice that each tile set has a note file right below it. Now, normally these note files contain the names of said tile, however they're replaced here with the numbers that were displayed before. All you have to do is yoink these note files and place them into your own game's tile set folder. If you need to create a longer list for a larger tile set, the way you write these out is that you have the name of the tile set go first, in this case it's B, and then a number from 0 to 7 separated by a comma, and then whatever number you're on next. These numbers correspond to the rows the tiles are displayed in, so B, 1, 0 would be the sword sign. The first number is going across, and the second one is going down. Anyways, now you've got these note files placed into your project file. Awesome. But it still doesn't work. Well, that's because there's one more step we need to take. Open up the database and go to tile sets. Since we're using the outside tile set, click on that, and then shift your eyes over to the notes section. Okay, 
don't panic. I know there's a lot to look at, but it's actually quite simple. Here, let me try to break it down for you. Scroll down through the list until you see cactus. Now, what does this line of code actually mean? Well, the first bit, B, 6, 21, is the same thing that's now displayed when you hover over the cactus on the tile set. After that comes shape, parentheses, cross. Okay, well, shape is pretty self-explanatory. It designates the shape in which the cactus tile would be drawn in the 3D space. There are actually four valid shapes you can use. Flat, fence, cross, and X cross. Each of these would change the way an object is displayed, so mess around with them until you find something you like. For now though, just copy the entire notes section and paste it into your project. Remember that flat cactus from before? Yeah, well now he's drank his milk, and he's come back as a big, strong man. That's really all there is to the basic installation of the MV3D plugin. However, my friend Vlad, who actually taught me how to do all of this, has a few quick thoughts to toss your way before this video ends. Thanks, Tasty. Hi everyone, glad to be here. Hopefully once I'm done, Tasty will release my family. So something we're doing on Shadow Quest is making the maps bigger than what they usually would be. This actually allows us to create a forced perspective to make our world seem a lot more open and spacious than it actually is. Also, converting an already finished map without 3D kept in mind, you're better off scrapping the old map really and starting a new one. Everything in MV3D will look and feel different. Clearly, there's a great community to help you along the way. Their Discord's actually down below in the description. Also, when mapping, you got to think in a 3D sort of space, since the player can actually see more than you think. So things like being able to see over walls, uh, like pushing their camera into places it shouldn't be, you've got to keep all these variables in mind when designing a map. So the other thing is this plugin isn't a one-size-fits-all. It will need to be played around with in order to fit your specific game. That being said, generally the diagonal movements to diagonal smart 3D will look a lot better. You can find this in options. Check out the official documentation of the plugin. This covers everything we've discussed here today and a ton more. It's a super valuable asset if you just want to jump even deeper into the plugin. There will be a link for it below. Along with any links to my Discord if you want inspirational or additional ideas of what you can do. Well anyway, that's everything from me. I'll just uh, pass it on back to you, Tasty. Toasty, you there? What? What's that noise? Toasty? Toasty, what are you doing here? Toasty, don't! Toasty, where'd you get that gun? Toasty, no! Alright, alright, Vlad, we get it. The plugin is pretty epic. Now, there's a lot more to cover about this plugin. We didn't even touch on implementing 3D models, but if there's enough interest in making this tutorial a series, we shall do so. Just let us know in a comment below. If you've learned something new, also consider subscribing. It would super help me out. And with that, my croutons, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.